What's going on, guys? It's Bruce Matson, your host of the show. Still no name, of course, but we're rocking and rolling, and it's a good time. It's a Saturday. The women and children are, chi- are tired. We're with the boys. We're ready to hang out, chill, get ready for some NFL action. We got Alabama, Georgia going on right now on a Saturday night. But I'm here to talk some football. When you got some break between the games, you can hit up this video. And I guarantee you're going to be entertained. And you're going to get a little bit of information. You're going to get some opinion. But, but, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell. Give me that thumbs up. Leave me some comments. I'll try to get back with you. Try to help you out with your fantasy teams, whatever you got going on. And if you have any suggestions for shows or anything, and I feel like I can rip 5, 10 minutes on it, or 15, 20 a lot of times I say this is going to be a quick one, and it ends up being 15, 20 minutes because that's how I am. I just get going, and I get going, and I get going. But if you got any suggestions, drop them in comments. I'll do my best for you. Working on updating the production and stuff for the show. I'm just waiting for this the snowball to get rolling a little bit more, more followers, more subscribers, more views, and I see that coming by each show. So thank you guys for watching. But let's get into it. So, really, I just want to do a quick show on a Saturday night, just give you guys some content. But the thing I wanted to hit on here, and I'm going to di- deep dive this more once we get into the off season, because this is when we really hammer these pro- prospects. But I really wanted to get on camera, get in front of you guys, and talk about Trevor Lawrence. And I, I don't think he is being really respected or honored the way he should be right now because I we talk about general generational prospects with wide receivers running backs and all that like yada 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 we get that about every year with a, a player from the quarterback position we don't get this too often and Trevor Lawrence is special and I'm talking when I we, we, we throw around that term right generational prospect but I'm in my mid-30s and prospect wise i'm not talking nfl quarterback wise this he might be the greatest i've seen in my lifetime i and i'm not even joking there's people there's a lot of people out there that that'll agree with me he's peyton manning level a while back we had andrew luck where like a year prior or even longer the draft community or nfl draft next or whatever you want to say or call them was already pegging Andrew Luck as the 101, as a elite level prospect. Trevor Lawrence is way above that. He, he surpasses Andrew Luck. What you were expecting Andrew Luck when he was coming out the draft, you're getting more out of Trevor Lawrence. You're getting mobility. You're getting precision, placement. This guy can throw on the run. He He's just accurate. I, I wouldn't be surprised seeing Clemson take a – a little step back because they're, they're still Clemson, but I I wouldn't be surprised. He he's that good, and you could drop him on NFL rosters now. Some of these bottom dweller teams, and some of these teams would have comp, um, competent play. Like you put them on the Jets right now, they're they're gonna do better. I'm not gonna say they're gonna win some games because Adam Gase is there and he is the anchor that drops all ships, of course. But you put him on a lot of rosters. Like, you put him on the Cowboys right now. Like, I'm sure Jerry Jones would trade some a lot of draft capital right now just to get Trevor Lawrence in there to fill a void of Dak Prescott. And he would probably lead the Cowboys to the playoffs. I, I'm, I'm not joking. And I've seen a lot of quarterbacks in my time. I've been analyzing football for a long time. This is the best quarterback I've ever analyzed bar none i think i've started right before i've started a few years before andrew luck and he is definitely better than andrew luck coming out and the only thing that can derail him is a major injury as far as i could tell you before this season trevor lawrence didn't need to play he proved himself he's just adding more layers of frosting on that cake more cherries on top of that draft profile and i couldn't believe it but he's actually actually looking better 
like he is getting better. I, I can't wait to see him, how he develops in the NFL, how he transitions, because I think he's going to transition very smoothly and quickly. Here, when we get into the offseason, I'm going to drop film reviews, talk about the specs, his metrics and all that, but I just want to drop my, my feelings towards some of these college players, and Trevor Lawrence is the first one here, and he is... He is a, I'm going to say, true generational prospect because we've been throwing this around too many times and it's cut, it's gotten soft as melted butter or soft like butter or whatever. And the, the, the term, the wordage, it just doesn't mean the same. However, Trevor Lawrence is a different breed, man. Trevor Lawrence can turn around a franchise and he can turn it around pretty quickly. I'm, I'm taking in like maybe two years or so, you, you build around him and you're going to be a smash franchise. If the Jets continue down their path, this downward spiral, of course, they, they better ignore that sunk cost with Sam Darnold and go with Trevor Lawrence because he is definitely an upgrade instantly. Even with Darnold already being in the NFL and them spending a previous first-round pick on him, just Lawrence presents that much more upside, that much more talent, higher floor even. I think Lawrence's floor is probably higher than Darnold's upside at this point. Like it, it would take something devastating for Lawrence to fail. I'm that confident. He is definitely heads and tails better than Joe Burrow. He's better than Tua Tagovailoa. He is better than Kyler Murray coming out. And then if he has the right weapons around him in the beginning, which is probably not going to happen, you could really assert him up top, one of the top fantasy quarterbacks like like this. Dynasty-wise, I normally, in one quarterback leagues, I don't normally throw quarterbacks in the first round rookie drafts. You're going to have to do that for Lawrence this year. Where, where it's at is going to be tricky, and it's going to be ten, depending on landing spot and depending on how well some of these players do throughout the rest of this uh, college season. Like how well these players perform, who gets hurt, who comes out, who's, who stays in college. We don't have all that answers yet. But Lawrence is it. I, I'm drafting him in the first round, and it's middle to late first. Like the top guys are still going to go. Those top running backs between Etienne, Najee Harris, Rashad Bateman, Jamar Chase, those top wide receivers I just mentioned, Rondell Moore. Those top guys are still going to be top guys. But Trevor Lawrence, we got to pull the trigger trigger on him quick this year. Usually. Those top quarterbacks that go early, mid, late, second round, depending on where they go, who they are, yada, yada, yada. The Kyler Murrays, the Joe Burrows, to a Tyler Veyas. Third round, you got had Herbert this year. But this year should be different. He should be a late first. If he's falling to the early second rookie drafts, is criminal because you're guaranteed a top 10. You're pretty much guaranteed a top 10 fantasy quarterback for a long term and it may not pay out year one year two it but you know it's going to happen there's a good chance of it and he has the mobility to give you some rushing production it's just you have the safety net that you know he's not going to fail and you see it on tape you see it every single saturday of him just bawling out and not just bawling out He's playing with like this premier perfection, just whipping balls out, putting the perfect placement, having mobility, setting his feet, looking good, and then having a little moxie while he's doing it. And he's only lost one game during his college career. I get it. He's played for Clemson, played against ACC, a lot of yada yada, but that's still a thorough resume. And barring injury between now and then the season, if I was him, I, I wouldn't play another game. If I was him, I'd, I'd be just getting ready for a draft. But this guy want, want, wants to move forward with his college career, do what he can do. God bless him. But he is going to be, bar none, the 101 
going into this NFL draft, the 2021. There used to be a debate between him and Justin Fields, quarterback from Ohio State. That was about a year or so ago, or year-ish, depending. I, I think that that's all a race. And not because Justin Fields hasn't been playing. It's just Trevor Lawrence has really cemented himself about how good he really is. Fields is a very, very good quarterback as well. This season is very important to him. I'm going to touch base more on Fields in another video once we get some games under his belt. Trevor Lawrence is a special player. I want you guys to be on the lookout for him every Saturday because this guy is throwing ropes, he's throwing lasers, and he's hitting those wide receivers in strides, and he's looking good. Even, even if it's a game against like the Citadel, like he still figures out a way against this lower competition to make these plays look amazing. And it's hard to do when it's when you make it look so effortless, but he he does this. You get him with some talent, and the Jets are a prime prospect to land at one on one. So you may want to think about going after Denzel Mims on the trade market in Dynasty drafts for sure, not Dynasty drafts, but in Dynasty leagues. Because right now he's on the cheap. He's been hurt. He's been a forgotten guy. He's on the Jets. He's giving you the Adam Gase discount. Just You may want to think about that. Uh, on top of that, he's a highly athletic prospect. Highly productive prospect out of college. There's nothing really bad to bet on there. Especially when you got, you're getting him at a reduced cost compared to what you are paying for him back in April. So... Denzel Mims is a buy, just just a speculatory buy because he do, if he does get paired with Lawrence, that that's wheels up. Lawrence going anywhere is wheels up for that team. So I'm very excited to see where he lands in the NFL. I'm very excited to see how his the rest of his career goes here at Clemson because he's a very good player, and I can't wait to break down his game more once we get into draft season january february march those slow months i'm going to be cranking that content i'll be doing tape metrics all that so that's why you want to hit subscribe that's why you want to stay with the channel that's why you want to be glued in to what i've been producing here on the youtubes because it's going to be non-stop fire and you do not want to be out of the loop you just, you just don't. You're going to be a better fantasy football player, better draft analyst, better dynasty player because of it. And I'm here for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe. Make sure you give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatevs. And I'm out because I'm going to enjoy my Saturday. I'm going to watch this Alabama-Georgia game. I had to hop on here at halftime, drop this video. It, it's it was been it's been burning inside me. Like I had to drop a video, I had to drop a video, and then it's been burning inside me for a while. I, I wanted to talk about Trevor Lawrence. I wanted to talk about Trevor Lawrence, and then I was like, today's the day. Today's the day. So this is your Trevor Lawrence content, and I want to thank you guys for listening to the show today. Make sure you hit subscribe on the way out so you don't miss the next episode. Drop some comments, feedback, or if you have any suggestions or any topics you want me to hit on, and I'll catch you next time.